What's up everybody? It's Voodoo51292 and tonight I'm going to be doing my reaction video um, to the upgrade that I put on my telescope, the Intelescope computer system that I upgraded my uh, Orion Star Blast 6 telescope with. Uh, but before I get into that, I want to let everybody know that there is going to be another special video up tonight on, uh, well first of all, Voodoo Astronomy as a channel is now born. I have created the channel and there's already a video up on the channel right now that has not seen been seen before. I didn't upload it to, to this channel. Um, it's a test footage shot of the planet Venus and also tonight, uh, the night that I'm uploading this video, making this video, I'll be putting a special third attempt at the uh, a third attempt at filming the planet Saturn up on that channel and in my opinion it's the best of all three. It looks really good in the footage I did tonight. Um, it's very clear and so it looks awesome. So I'll be putting that up and a special announcement I'm going to be moving all of my telescope test footage from this channel to Voodoo Astronomy. I'm going to take them down from this channel put them up on Voodoo Astronomy it makes sense to have all those videos on my astronomy channel to start get the, getting that going. So, if you want to see uh, any more of the telescope test footage, you're going to have to go over to Voodoo Astronomy. I'll put a link to it in the description of this video. And it's the first uh, channel under my recommended channels on my home page. Um, so, go over there and check it out if you haven't seen it or subscribed yet. Uh, go over there. There's not too much, but there will be more to come. All right. So... First things first, I was horribly misinformed as to what this upgrade did, and I gave a lot of uh, wrong information about it in my uh, or in talks that I have, have given about it, and in episode seven of Voodoo's Brew that came out earlier this week, uh, I was just misinformed. And come to find out, it does not make the tel this telescope motorized at all. It does not make it, um, it doesn't automatically track planets. Uh, what it does is it basically, after you align the telescope with a couple of stars, what it'll do is it'll actually, if you type in an object, it actually will give you arrows, uh, such as left or up, and a number. And that's basically telling you, giving you directions, basically like a map quest of what you're looking for. And you move the telescope in the direction that it's indicated, and the numbers are there just to let you know how close you are. And of course the idea is to get the numbers to zero, uh, both left and right and up and down, and then you're supposed to be able to to see the object. Um, so all the movement still manual, I still have to move the telescope myself. Um, all it gives you is basically directions as to where to point it. So really badly misinformed, but uh, I have gotten a chance to use it extensively tonight, uh, and I have a lot of things to say about it. So, first thing is, is that it actually took me two hours on Tuesday. It came in on Tuesday. It took me two hours to actually set the whole thing up. Basically, I had to take apart the entire telescope, the whole base to it. I had to separate it into its two parts, and it, I mean, it came assembled with the box. So, I mean, I had to take it apart. You know, I didn't even have to put it together originally, but now I have to take it apart. There were pieces I had to take out, pieces I had to add. Um, I, had, I had to install three computer chips by drilling, or not drilling, but screwing in the chips in certain areas, installing springs. Uh, it just very, a lot of stuff. It took a lot to install this. It took about two hours of me doing it by myself to get it installed. Um, and then I had a night on uh, Wednesday where I, uh, or I'm sorry, on Tuesday, it was on Tuesday, I had invited my, my friends over and we were going to have an observing night and I took the thing out and, and tried to align it and everything and come to find out, it was telling me to point the bottom of my telescope at whatever I wanted to see, which didn't make any sense. Um, Come to find out, the people at Orion Telescopes are a bunch of idiots and actually wrote the instructions for use in the southern hemisphere, meaning that the telescope, it was actually inverted, um, 
and they don't mention that anywhere and it's funny because they're based out of California and they only ship products to North America, to North America, that's it. So why in the world would their instructions be for the Southern Hemisphere? It makes no sense. So I found this out by a review on the site that said yes, it's incorrect. And then it got cloudy so we couldn't even use it that night. But then I had to take the whole base apart again because there's a stopper that you install in the base of the telescope that helps you align it vertically because that's one of the things you have to do with the computer is align it vertically and the stopper is supposed to help but I had to flip the telescope around and when you flip it around the stopper um, doesn't work because it's off to one side and so when you flip the telescope around it it'll stop the telescope well before it's vertical so I had to completely remove that and uh, there's no way to put it on the other side where it's supposed to be because there's there's only pre-drilled holes on the side that's supposed to be used for South America, or the Southern Hemisphere, I should say. And there's no pre-drilled hole on the other side, so I can't even use the vertical stopper. I have to, I have to get a level now every time I want to line it up vertically, because the people at Orion are stupid. So, I flipped the telescope around, and that did in fact solve that problem that I was having. That's exactly what was wrong with it. The instructions were backwards. So, excellent job to Orion for writing a backwards instruction manual. A sip of tea. So they should be commended for that. So anyway, I finally got to go out there tonight and use it for about three hours I spent outside observing. And uh, I noticed some things about this system, alright? First of all, it doesn't really it, from what I've seen, it's not. It hasn't been too accurate as to where stuff is. Um, basically, for instance, like I said, the way you align it is the first thing you do is have to align it vertically. Tell it to align vertically, and then you have to align it basically with two reference stars. Your pick, basically, of, of bright stars. You center it. The idea is you use a, a high-powered uh, eyepiece, so it's a very zoomed-in eyepiece and you center two separate stars and you let the computer know what stars those are and from there it's supposed to orient itself basically and then know where everything else is in the sky and of course if you use it with the high powered eyepiece you're trying to get it very close and then the instructions say well once you calibrate it with the high powered eyepiece then uh, whatever the, the uh, computer tells you to look at when you look at it then it will be, it will be in the viewable area of a, of a less uh, powered eyepiece. So basically, you're trying to get it as good as you can, but there's going to be, you know, it's not going to be perfect, uh, is basically what they're telling you. Well, from what I found was, the directions are actually pretty good in the areas that you use as your reference stars. But in the other areas, like the other two cardinal directions, it's not accurate. Um, for instance, if I line up a reference star in the east and one in the west, if I'm looking at objects in the east and west, the computer is actually pretty pretty good at, uh, it's pretty accurate as to where stuff is. But if I want to look at stuff north and south, it's off. It's not close to, it's not even viewable in the, in the, the, uh, the less magnification eyepiece. It's really just badly off. Um, and that could be a couple of things, all right? First of all, it could be because of the fact that my driveway in my backyard is actually gradually sloping. And it's not real noticeable, but I'm thinking it could make a difference with the telescope. If it's not completely level, then it could be screwing up uh, the accuracy. So it could be that. Um, it could be the fact that the, tele that the system is not that great and it's not that accurate. Um, so it could, be, it could be one of those two things. Now, there's other things I can do to test this out. I can go out in the front yard on the level sidewalk where I know it's level and try it that way uh, and see if it works you know, across the board there. Uh, I can try that in the future. But... Um, I noticed that I was trying to find a lot of deep sky objects, and what I noticed was is that the only ones I, I saw some new things I haven't seen before tonight. 
Uh, the coolest by far was the Beehive cluster, M44, the Beehive Open Star cluster. That was very neat to look at. I enjoyed that. Um, but other than that, the only things that I could find were what they call globular clusters. And these are very densely packed clusters of stars. Um, and those I could actually find, the computer actually was pretty accurate at finding these globular clusters, and I, I probably saw about three or four of them. Um, and as they appear in the telescope, they just look like, um, they just look like little, very faint smudges is really what they look like, because they're so far away um, that that's the best you can really get with a backyard telescope. Uh, they they just look like faint smudges, uh, but I did see them. They were they were obvious, and uh, so that was neat. Uh, but I could, but as far as galaxies and nebula were concerned, I could not see any of them, and that could be for a variety of reasons that I don't know. Number one is that my telescope is just not powerful enough, which I don't believe, because from the things that I see, you're supposed to be able to see some of the galaxies with it. Two, uh, the alignment of the telescope was off because the computer was off. That's likely because it was off. For, I, I, the reason I know it was off is because I used a couple of reference stars in, the other, in other directions to check how accurate it was, and it wasn't very accurate in the areas that I didn't uh, calibrate it. So that could be a pretty real thing. Um, third is that there's too much light pollution in my area, which is a high possibility. And since these things are very faint, um, it could be possible that there's too much light pollution to see them. So, all of these factors are there. They're all testable, I think. Um, another thing could be simply that I don't have a powerful enough eyepiece. Um, but the problem is with that is I think the idea of this computer system is to basically get it in your field of view. And you do that with the, the wide field uh, focal piece. And... Once you find it in your wide field, then you can center it and start getting uh, progressively higher magnification until you see what you want to see. Problem is that you need to be able to locate it with the wide field uh, view. And what happens if these objects are so faint that they can't be viewed? You can't see them with the with the, the I have the 25 millimeter eyepiece, which is the wide field. What if you can't see it with the 25 millimeter, but you can see it with a higher magnification? You won't be able to find it, especially considering that the computer system isn't the most accurate thing. Um, so I still have to play with it a lot. I need to go test it out in the front yard, see if doing it on a, on a surface that I know is level will, um, help with the calibration. Um, there is still a potential dark sky site that my dad has suggested that we still need to go check out. Uh, and maybe there, if it's dark enough, maybe it would be easier to see galaxies and nebulae and things like that. Um, I'm, I'm getting higher magnification eyepieces and a Barlow lens on the way uh, next month in May for my birthday. I can try those out, see if the higher magnifications will help anything. Um, so, you know, uh, there's a lot of different factors that are still unknowns that I need to, uh, to try out with this computerized system. But so far, um, I've been underwhelmed, I'll say that. It didn't do what I thought it was going to do, and it wasn't extremely accurate. But I was able to find the Beehive Cluster and some of the Globular Star Clusters tonight, which was, uh, was pretty cool. So, um, but I spent about three hours observing, and I only found probably four or five new things. And they were all Star Clusters, so uh, it's not quite as easy as they make it sound to find items. Oh, excuse me. But, um, but yeah, that's my initial impressions. Still have a lot to do with it. A lot of testing, a lot of work to do with it. Um, I can't believe that they were so stupid as to put inverted directions um, for setup. I mean, that's just asinine. And I can't believe that they still haven't changed it because they've been, I think, They've been coming out with this kind of telescope for this upgrade for like the past eight years or something like that and they still haven't fixed it so that's pretty funny uh, but also very annoying um, but uh, 
Tomorrow night's supposed to be a, a clear night. Um, I have, I'm inviting my friends back over since I fixed the major problem with it was that, you know, with the inversion. And we'll probably try it out in the front yard tomorrow and see if that, um, see if that makes a difference. Um, which I'm hopeful that it will. And we'll see if, if the, the known level sidewalk will help with the calibration. If not, I mean, I don't know. Now, the possibility of returning it, since it's not as great as I thought, possible, but it took so much work to set it up, and it would take so much work to disassemble it, uh, and there's no instructions, obviously, for disassembly, uh, to package it up and send it all the way back. I mean, it's not as glorious as I thought it would be, but it is a useful tool. I mean, I, I did, like I said, I found things tonight that I, uh, I, I couldn't find before, and because of this system, it's going to keep me hunting. It's going to keep me trying to hunt, trying to find these objects, these deep sky objects. Uh, I'm still going to keep keep looking hard. So, um, so you know, I, I think I'm going to keep the system. I've already worked it into my budget, and uh, you know, I'll keep it and I'll keep working with it, and maybe. Um, you know, as I, as I work with it, I'll get better at using it, uh, but we'll just have to see. So, those are my initial impressions about the Intelliscope upgrade to my Orion Star Blast 6, which now makes it an Orion Star Blast 6i uh, with this upgrade. So, yeah, as I keep working with it and learn more about it, I'll probably make more videos in the future letting you know how I feel about it. Um, but that's it, so thanks for watching, and again... All of my telescope test footage is now going to be shifted over to my YouTube channel, Voodoo Astronomy. It's just youtube.com slash voodoo astronomy. Uh, link to it in the description of this video. And also, uh, lost my train of thought. Oh, it's also the first video in my um, suggested or other channels uh, at the bottom of my page on the right hand side. Uh, if you want to just click that and get to it. Go over there, check it out, and there will be more stuff to come over there on that channel. I will let you know um, what I'm thinking about doing. Uh, so, until then, I'm Voodoo51292. Thank you very much, and I will see you guys later.